Well, I have to tell you guys, this is the part of blocks I mean, I hate the most. It's all the little stuff. But it's got to be done. I've got to find those, uh, those spots. See if you can even see this. Yeah, this part like this right here. It's not the sanding part, it's actually trying to get a putty knife in there and fill that. <laughs> it's like, man. This part's just time consuming. It feels like you're going nowhere. But I'll use that um, pro glaze on here. I get this sanded a little bit. A little bit of pro glaze on here, and I don't know how I'm gonna get the knife in there. That's the, like right, right in here, where you can't get your knife. And same thing in here, when you're trying to put the knife in, there's no way to do it without putting filler all over that or something so if you use your finger then it just doesn't fill enough it's hard that's the hard part right there I think I got a dip right here I don't know if you can even see it but this one right here right at the edge of that how do I get that it's gonna be hard oh well I'll figure it out it's always hard this part is always the tough part kind of fun uh this is 67 one year only deck lid right uh neptune blue was the only year that they had or this this is the only year they had neptune blue this is neptune blue 67 original paint it's kind of neat the one only one i think i've ever seen they had 68 9 70 71 whatever but not 67 all right so that looks all right couple little tiny ways right there and a little tiny little thing up here maybe I'll get that out with blocking and there's a little tiny ding right there I just noticed but most of it might come out with blocking I may, I may just do that just roll with that right there and then catch that on the final block then this looks a lot better uh, it's still kind of drying right now so it looks kind of weird. But I got this little spot right here. It's still there. You guys can see that when you're sitting right there. But once the rubber's in there, it sticks out kind of about to here. So I think it'll distract that enough to where I'm not going to really notice it. It's kind of a pain. I have to keep filling in it. You know, I'll probably put two or three more coats on there. And it's kind of a hand sand nightmare. Like in the middle, looks pretty neat though. That doesn't look too bad. So once the glass is in, whether I put safaris in it or I put regular glass in, most of that stuff's going to get hidden. And if it's uh, gets safaris, then uh, it'll have the latches right here and right here. And that kind of distracts some of that. And it should look good. This looks all right. Just needs a little bit more hand sanding on it. Done. Anyway, that's it for that. All right, so yeah, I kind of ground that edge down. Just have to have enough room for the rubber to go in there because you got the rubber that's going to smash down so it's going to take you know real tight tolerance and yeah i hate so i know some comments on there so i i don't i don't go for uh, i can deal with a gap on the bottom of the door but i do not like rattles i will not have a rattle in my car so for sure it won't have that especially when you see the rubber i use uh, i use different stuff than what they sell it's a lot cheaper. I'll show you some cool tricks later on in the video series. Let's take a look. I'll give this a quick sand. Here, a little five minute cleanup with some filler. Let's see how it looks. All right, guys, I'm gonna spray can this. I know some guys want me to shoot the Tamco, but it just takes me a little bit of time to mix it up. And for something like this, I just wanna just show how that looks. Hide all. <laughs> I really, I only spent like five minutes on this, 
So just so you know, that's it. I think all that looks, doesn't look bad. So once the doors are in and everything and they're shut, I just ground the edge down, threw a little filler, ground the top down, put a little filler on there, and just kind of filled it in to make it look even. And it looks like that. That looks good enough. Like I said, I'm not worried about the door gap on the bottom. It's not really, a lot of my other vans, nobody's ever really pointed it out. And I really, it's more of the time investment. I do not want to put so much time into something that I don't want to drive it. That's the most important thing to me. So a little bit of door gap on the bottom. Can live with that for no problem. No problem at all. So, it looks good. Talk to you in the next portion. All right, so I figured, uh, shot a little bit of base on here. I shot this with uh, a base coat of some Sign Industry paint, kind of, a, kind of a yellow color. Then I've already shot the Tamco base on here. So you guys can see the color on the edges. And here you can see a little bit of the yellow shadowing, maybe. I don't know, maybe not. But, uh, you know, I'm not looking for too fancy under here. It's underneath, so sides. I want those to look pretty good. I'm not trying to look for perfect on jams. So anyway, I'm going to shoot the clear. I'll let you guys watch it. This is Tamco Clear Coat. We'll check it out. And yes, I am wearing my respirator. So this is the Harbor Freight gun. We're going to run it at 20 pounds. Two turns out the HTE, so it doesn't use as much air. Yeah, I think it makes pretty low amount of overspray for a clear coat gun. I, you know, I, I don't know if this is the best clear coat gun, but it's great for the jams. Just want to try it, see how it goes. I don't know. I've never tried clear with it yet, so. So this is uh, 20 pounds, two turns out with uh, an eighth turn narrowed fan. Let's see if it sprays okay. I don't know. I'll figure it out in there. Neither. I think I needed another half turn. Let's move you guys over here. Hopefully you can see okay. Try this one.
Well, I'll tell you, that stuff really smashes on there. Really nice. With that low of pressure. Let's take a look here on the first coat. That's no orange peel. Level. Doesn't look like there's any runs going on around the edges where I put it on heavy. That's just one coat. Shoot, that would almost be good enough for jams. I might just do two just for fun. Look, it's about ready almost for the second coat right now. I've got a medium hardener in here. So, yeah, there's some flaws in them, of course. But, like I said, I don't really care that much about that. It's underneath, underneath here. Ran myself a little short, let me get this ready. If I was having to spray it complete with this, I'd have to turn the air up quite a bit. About 30 pounds, probably.
All right, so as we walk around, um, the reason I shot this outside today is because I only just wanted to shoot a couple items. I wanted to get like that thing painted and I want to finish painting the outside of that. Um, but I'll do that another time and have those all painted, put them away. Um, and I didn't really want to get the, the portable spray booth out just for doing a couple small things. And it's great weather today. It, there's no wind. So anyway, uh, Mr. Bug landed right there, didn't he? Yeah. It'll pick right out. Let that dry. There is, I don't know if you can, I'm trying to get you guys at the right angle here. Yeah, there is nothing in that. That is smooth as, that is just as smooth as you can ever paint anything. So, I don't think I got any runs either. The edges and stuff. Nope. No, shot it perfect. Just, I, I'm shooting a lot slower on this because I had the gun settings that way. So I just left it that way and just went slower because it's just little jams. It's nothing. If I paint the whole car, I'd have to turn it up a bit. Couldn't spray it that slow. You, you just have a dry, you'd have dry spots all over the place, especially on a van. So that's just a little, just a little tidbit of what we're going to do here. Thought I'd just do this so you guys can see. That was like, yeah, let's look at that. Can you guys see that? But it flows all the way through here. Yep, I know how to spray. I love it when people tell me I don't know how to spray. That's so funny. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Let's look at these in a couple days, let them dry, and then uh, they're dry right now. And you can try to touch just about. So, yeah, they're pretty much dry to touch, and uh, that whatever's in them is not gonna, it's not gonna keep flowing out. It's not gonna run. It's done right now. So, anyway, uh, Tamco Clear guys, this stuff. If you want good, good clear, you want the best stuff there is, and you don't want to pay a lot, that's the place to go. This stuff is right up there. I mean, I used to use a lot of RM. I used RM Merocryl. I used Glasserit or Glassomax. And uh, I like their Merocryl clear better than I did the Glassomax clear, which is the Glasserit now. Um, and that stuff didn't spray anything like this. This stuff sprays even better. It's just amazing. It just melts when, it, when as soon as those dots hit together, they just it just flows like nothing I've ever seen. So, and the other clear I used to use was really good like that too, but nothing, not quite as good as this. This stuff is top, top of the line. All right, guys, talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. See anything in that reflection that uh, looks like orange peel? I don't think so. Even on the sides, this looks really super smooth along here. This is all completely dry now, so just so you can see, completely dry. That's that Tamco just really goes down perfect. This doesn't, you don't see those things on the other side, they're just underneath. It doesn't really matter, this is just, you know, I just wanted this painted underneath here. The top part's going to get painted nice, you know, it's going to be something you'll see, but not really. You hardly notice that thing. Anyway, I thought I'd shoot a little section of that for you.